Hi there, welcome, welcome to Homekeepers. I'm so glad to be here and I'm so glad you're there and hope everything is going so great for your family. I had the wonderful privilege of having dinner with my family, uh, my son who's a pastor in, Oklahoma, in uh, Alabama and had them and some of their children and there's nothing like it, is there? Just to have dinner with family. And that's kind of what we're all about here and we consider you our precious viewers family. And we have another family member, that's Dr. David Clark. We are blessed to have him come here every month and all of the great advice he gives. He is a Christian psychologist and his major is dealing with broken marriages and trying to put them together, you know, and with the Word of God, that's a good place to start. It'll usually work, so he's back. We're going to talk about his book, Men Are Clams and Women Are Crowbars. <laughs> That's the most descriptive title I've ever seen. Uh, and I'm going to join Stephanie. You know, I used to preach all over the country and for 20 years. And I, I was in Pennsylvania a lot. And finally, I think the last time I was there, I said, you know, I've never had a Philly, Philly cheesesteak. And that's awful if you're in Pennsylvania. The pastor said, I'll get you one. Oh, boy. Nothing like a great experience. And we're going to fix one today for you. There's a lot of ways you can do it. So we'll show you this particular recipe, okay? Before I join Stephanie though, um, thank you for all your support. We appreciate it so very much. And if you're looking for a good place to put some of your giving uh, money uh, to a ministry that tries to help and reach out to families, which I think is one of the most crucial ministries in the United States today, thank you so much. You can use a credit card by calling 1-800-229-0059 or Write to me at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we thank you in advance. And I've joined Stephanie over here. Now, uh, the way we're doing these cheese steaks today uh, is with ground beef. But yes. I think the one I had up the north wasn't. It was not ground beef, I guarantee yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it was. Yeah, 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 it was good. <laughs> okay, so I browned mm -hmm. some hamburger and mm -hmm. I'm gonna take it out of the pan. I'm gonna put some butter and some onions in here and I'm gonna get them so Are you a crowbar? I could beat you with a crowbar. <laughs> <and> I, <laughs> I think that's the most descriptive title that I've is ever so seen. That's so good, yes. Is, is your husband a clam? Um, no, I mean, he's a pretty good talker, but I, here's what I did discover while this is. Um, this is sauteing. We've got marriage counselor here, Stephanie, yes. about to give you here's, some advice. Here's what I discovered. We're together 30 years, okay? Really? really? Yes. And you think that you know somebody, <laughs> and you think you know what they're thinking, right? Yeah. After 30 years. So we had a subject come up of something that had happened, and we both remembered it so differently. Like that is Completely it. differently. So then I was thinking, hmm. I wonder, because at the time, we weren't going through anything, we weren't fighting or anything, but there was something happening, and I thought, you know what, I wonder if he thinks, I'm, I, if he's waiting for me and I'm waiting for him. Mm -hmm. So I sat down, I said, you know what, let's have a chat. I said, first of all, <laughs> let's figure out what each other's love yeah, languages. Yeah, I have my crowbar here. No, yeah, what, what are each other's love languages? Because there's five, mm -hmm. and you think, you think you know what they are, but you may not. Because my husband didn't, he thought he knew what mine was, and uh -huh. he kind of did, but, and then we started talking about what the subject that was going on, and we both exactly <laughs> thought he was waiting for me, and I was waiting for him, so it's, just communicate, communicate. Yeah, that's, yes. that's the bottom line. Yes. Because, you know, a lot of people think the main reason for divorce is finances and uh -huh. all that, and it's unmet expectations. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And how can the guy, how can your husband know what you want when you don't usually know what you want, ladies? Yes. Now, what, and vice versa. Listen, I know, I was a marriage counselor I'll once, and I, I said, um, that's a lot of, and I said, uh, you know, you live with someone long enough, you you know what they're thinking, and he said, no, you don't. You really don't. After 30, I'm, I'm, I'm going to save a few. Okay. After 30 years, I thought, oh, yeah. surely I know yeah. what he's thinking. Of course, he thinks he knows what I'm thinking. Communa, Kate. Oh, yes, and we got Dr. Clark here, and he, yes. besides he's funny, I think when you make these things humorous, they hit home. Yeah, and sometimes we get a little too serious. 
Sometimes we yes, get a we little could too use more serious. Now, what, now I'm doing something here very important. You are taking the beef broth and, and the cornstarch corn and you're in mixing it. them together. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put the beef back in here, and I'm going to put ketchup and Worcestershire mm -hmm. and salt and pepper. Now, how accurate is this? We know the meat's not accurate for a filly. I don't think any of this is accurate. Oh, okay. No, I don't think so. This is this is just new a, territory. This is just a fun. Call it a Philly cheesesteak, mm -hmm. sloppy Joe, but the people who live up there are probably having a oh, coronary right yeah, now. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no. They're saying, how dare you? Yeah, no. Because this is sacred to them. Yeah, no. To all those people in Philadelphia, we apologize. Yes, because, I mean, this, no. Mm -mm. How could we know? We, we live here. Yeah. Now, talk to us about strawberry shortcake. Yes, we're, or we're, strawberry bread. Yeah. Oh, yeah, strawberry shortcake. Uh, we've mentioned before, we have a whole strawberry festival here. Yes. And it's huge. And I can't wait. Thousands of people go. So many. And the big artists. We, they have big artists uh -huh. come through there. I have concert tickets. So they I'm have excited. Christian artists sometimes. They have a lot of yes. country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All, they, they cover all the gamuts, yes. Okay, now, so is that just, supposed to cook till it thickens just up a little bit? Just for a minute. It just needs a minute. We have a minute, mm -hmm. so we're okay, okay. right now. So, yes, I'm excited to go. Like, you didn't enjoy the Strawberry Festival as much as I did. Well, but we, I find Christmas presents and stuff at things like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we went on a day where it was unusually hot and humid. Yes. And a lot oh, of dust out there. that's miserable. That's kind of miserable. Yeah, yeah and it needed to rain a little bit to tap down the dust. Yeah. But uh, one of the main reasons I wanted to go is because I felt, as a Floridian, I should have a strawberry festival experience. Yes, always. And I also wanted the strawberry shortcake. And it was good. It's so good. You stand in this line and they have this big old <laughs> barrel of strawberries that have been a have whipped sugar cream. in them. And a big old thing of whipped cream. And you can pick between a biscuit or mm -hmm. one of those now, other. Now, I'm going to put that in two okay. seconds. I just wanted this water to, this uh, beef broth. Well, don't take any of Dr. Clark's time, please. I, I, we have, yeah. We're okay. I I'm, think this I'm is, watching the time. I we're think okay. this is looking good. <laughs> oh, I think it's going to be delicious. What kind, of, what kind of cheese was that? Mm. Yep. Yep, that kind. Yeah. Where is it? Oh, provolone. Provolone, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, okay, so, and then you, you can, the, the ingredients call for green peppers. Yes, and because of my loyal friendship because to she Stephanie, loves me. I didn't buy the green pepper because so she didn't thankful. like them. They grossed And you out. can do that. That's what you do at home. You just yes. do it a little different if you don't like things, mm -hmm. right? Oh, look at that cheesy goodness. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Okay, and you probably would let it cook down a little bit more Just than little, oh. That's enough. Oh, look it. <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's when you know it's good. Okay, get it. Okay. Right. You don't even have a fork. No. Here, I'm going to get you a fork. I'm going to try to pick it up. <gasps> you are? It's hot, hot, hot. Here. Yeah, it's no. hot. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah. So I'll just have to kind of <laughs> it taste it. It would make great television, but I don't want you to hurt mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah, you're right. I appreciate yes. it. Mm -hmm. Well, you saved well, me. Well, can I? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not authentic, Come but on. I tell you, it is delicious. Yeah. Wait till you taste it. That. That the is flavor. Very, very good. The flavor. Mm. I think your family would like that. Mm -hmm. It's called... Philly Cheese Steak Sloppy Joe's, and you can have it free. That information is coming up. And then Dr. Clark is here. I love him because he's smart and very funny. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, today is Dr. David Clark Day, once a month on Homekeepers. And uh, honestly, we're, we're honored to have you because marriages are in trouble and you have this long track record. And I've told the audience before, you're so biblically based. Well, I try to be. And yep. actually, marriage counseling can come from, I mean, you've heard stupid things like, oh. well, if you had an affair, it might help the marriage, you know? Well, yes. exactly. Stupid. These people make it up as they go along, and they're wrong. <laughs> and Dr. Uh, Clark is totally based in the word, and appreciate that. Also, uh, before we get into this book, we've been in the last two months, uh, Men Are Clams, Women Are Crowbars. 
I'd like to remind you that he has a podcast called I Don't Want a Divorce. That, that's a title that might draw people in. Well, I think it is because people don't want to be divorced. At least one spouse doesn't want to be. And, you and don't it's, have to it's be. safe to listen to a podcast. It is. Yeah. Privacy of your own home, your car, whatever. Yeah. yeah, you can get good. And then he's got a plethora of books. You can get that on the uh, website. Um, you're on with Janet Parshall once a month. I am. I am. I'm sure you have a Radio Moody station in your area. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. So you've got a lot of great outreaches here. A lot of, things are, a lot of great things are happening, reaching people in different ways. Mm -hmm. We are. And also to that website, you, there's an 800 number. You can even get a personal telephone con uh, conversation with him, you which can. might be helpful. You have to pay for it, but it's worth it, every uh -huh. penny. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, it's still a consultation. It you is. Know, That's right. That's what people pay for. Okay. <laughs> uh, we've talked uh, a lot about this. I think on the last one we talked about the difference. Women want intimacy and men are too logical for intimacy. And, yeah, There's a great gulf fixed between them. Uh, There's a big gulf, uh, yes. <laughs> so, your first chapter is about crowbar activity, and the name of the chapter is Good Luck Betty. <laughs> she gets her crowbar out and starts to open this clam yeah, and tries. Yeah, it's not, not going to work. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> you said she wants to know what her husband is feeling. Right. Desperate well, he doesn't to know. know what he's feeling. Exactly. So how could he tell her? Uh -huh. <laughs> right. And if he did find out, he's, he's not about to share it. Mm -hmm. Even with the person he loves most in the world. Most of these guys are good guys. They love their women. They don't know what to do with them. Crazy thing, when a woman asks you to share and she starts to press you, the man feels controlled, pressured, and he shuts down. Mm -hmm. When what she's asking for is perfectly reasonable. Okay, if she puts the crowbar down, what does she do then? Well, it's kind of a backing off. What I do, they have to kind of, there's a structural piece to it, and there's some specifics. You establish, the guy doesn't want to talk like all the time, but four days out of the week, pick four days, 30-minute couple talk times. Four 30-minute couple talk times. That is the venue in which he will conversate with you, hopefully. Uh, and then would you use those times, like here's one example of what it means not to use a crowbar. Let's say we're talking, we're married, and... Um, and, and you are, Arthur, my wife, and you are sharing about five or six topics, like women do this and that and the other. I'm listening. I'm reflecting. But one category is you don't tell me you have to have a response to any of those topics. It's up to me to choose. Now, I'm interested because I love you, but if I choose topic number two, that kind of intrigues me, and I want to give a response to that, then I'll do so. It's up to me. The guy's got to feel in, in control. But if you ask me to do it, if you pin me to the wall, I'm not going to respond. So that's one category. Now, there's a second category, and this is fair. Maybe 10% of our conversations, you really need a response. It's important to you. I need to know what Dave thinks. And so you have to tell me, okay, Dave, this is one of those, those conversational topics I have to have a response on. Otherwise, the guy won't know. Everything seems important to you. So if you tell me it's important, <laughs> uh, okay, I now know I have to process that. I won't tell you at the time, right? like right now, because I don't know what, I, I haven't thought about it. I haven't processed it like guys have to do. But if I take a day, if I take 20 minutes, take two hours, if I process it and I come back on that topic because you asked me to, that's reasonable. That's working together as a team. Whoa. Do you think Adam and Eve were like this? Uh, I think they were before the fall. <laughs> 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 they could do anything. And then, of course, they crashed. Or have we evolved to this? Uh... <laughs> I don't think so. I'm sure they had their own problems. And, of course, we, we see what happened. Although, even before the fall, of course, this was the beginning of the sin, they didn't, they were standing in front of the tree and they blew it. Mm -hmm. There was no, com there was no communication. Adam yeah, you dropped know, the Adam. ball. He blew it. He yeah, did. Yeah, he blew it there. That was the, the man is the leader. He's responsible. He should have said, we're not doing that. Eve, yeah. what are you, nuts? Eve. We're not doing it. Don't eat it. I'm not eating it. Let's talk to God about this. Did he do that? Silence. No, oh, and then he, t did he take a bite? I think so. Yeah, she think offered it to him. Boom. Game over. Well, anyway, whatever, since... Garden of Eden, um, we, we got to work with what we've got. And we've got a lot of broken people. Yeah. We've got a lot of damaged people. And you're trying to come together and build something that you could never put a true value on. And right. that's a good marriage yeah. and family. It's priceless. And it's, it's, yeah. worth, it's worth the effort. Um, women want, in your book, men. <laughs> I, I still love this title. 
women are crowbars, and are we good at it? Oh, yeah. Well, well, we try a lot. I don't know how successful we are. but no, Women are always trying, yeah, always we, trying. you got to give that to us. Okay. Yes. <laughs> In a relationship, you say women want closeness, men want control, and boys are taught that big that um, big boys don't cry. Oh, yeah. So we, women are wanting you to be emotional, right. and everything has taught that child since he was born that you're not supposed to be emotional. No, that's not being a man. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. And if I didn't see my dad do it, or my grandpa do it, either one of my grandpas do it, or my uncle do it, or my brother do it, or my coach do it as a man, no. The, the big uh, movie stars, they don't do it. So you learn, that's cultural education. I'm not, I'm already born that way, now I learn from culture, no, no. And my family, you don't share personally. Well, if you don't do that, you're gonna have a lousy marriage. No woman on earth is going to accept that. She wants to know who you are. You're going to have to get better at me. And, and that's what love is. I, I have to love you the way you want to be loved, not the way I think you should be loved. Okay. Are women more pliable? Because, oh, they're, oh, they're easy to change. Oh, there's no question Because the guy it. needs to be in control, but women, they, they really do want uh, a closeness and intimacy. And so are they more prone to adjust and change? Oh, oh I think so. I can yeah. do much more with a woman. Even if I have a guy that won't come to therapy uh, and, or won't be on the phone call with us, I, I'll talk to the lady and their strategies, and they're more than willing to try things because they want mm -hmm. it so badly, and yeah, they are more flexible. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. I can convince them what you're doing isn't working, let's try this, and they'll try it, and it works. Yeah, men are much more rigid, more difficult to work with, uh, typically. Well, we should get a, a lot of clues from when they're very, very young. Because boys rough house and they grunt a lot. Yes, they do. Um, sometimes you can understand them, sometimes not. And, and girls are just... Oh, yeah. My three daughters, when I got home, they'd want to talk and share about their day and sit on the couch. When I got home and I saw William, he just wanted to fight. He wanted to fight me. <laughs> I I'd get out of the car and he just attacks me like an, some kind of an animal. And it was great fun. <laughs> and we'd fight all the way in and we'd fighting on the... And the girls are going, what's the with yeah. you and Sandy was upset. Well, we're just guys here. We're, we're testing our strength. <laughs> and girls want to watch Hallmark movies. So. Oh, don't they? That's the bane of every man's existence. <laughs> Sandy and I, this is love, Arthur Lean, last night. You watch them with her? I did. The last, I'll watch the last like 50, I can't take the whole thing. It's too much, two hours. And you know exactly what's going to well, happen. Well, they're kind of predictable. They, yes. they are. But the last 15 minutes, she'll call me in and, oh, you like this one? I said, yeah, right. <laughs> and I sat with her and she held my hand, which was nice of her. And she rubbed my head. That was that makes it worse. What kind of a deal we have? And then I watched the end, and they got together. The wrong guy, they of course, was gotten rid of, and the right guy came through. That was love, because I don't want to watch that stuff. <laughs> well, I want to tell my viewers, you just met a man who practices what he preaches. I'm telling you, that's even 15 sacrifice. minutes is what tough. It was hard. Yeah, what a sacrifice, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, in your book, you say that you would sit on the floor with your three girls and play Barbies. I would. Oh, yeah, we had some wonderful times. That wasn't my, uh, my idea, of course. Sandy said, you need to play Barbies with your daughters. That's what they're doing, and that's how they talk. Oh, I spent hours <laughs> doing that. And there, I hope there'll be some rewards I, in heaven. I wish, <laughs> I wish you had a picture. That's what I wish. Oh, it's funny. You, what we walk out to the clubhouse, all the toys were kept. And the 40, a, a, group, a big pile of 45 completely naked Barbies would greet you because you have to dress them first. <laughs> and you'd think it'd be a snap. Barbie is so anorexically thin. How hard could it be? But the clothes are thinner than Barbie. You just can't tug on the pants and the shoes. Oh, it was just. So that was like a half an hour right there. And then when they're finally dressed, you talk, you're all, of course, they're all talking because you have to become your Barbie. Do you join in the conversation or did you join in oh, the conversation? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, I'm an expressive guy. I can, I can throw some things out. Right. You kind of get into your character because it's not dad anymore. It's, I would like, I totally hair Barbie was the one I like. Long, I'm a, I like wands. Long blonde hair all the way to the floor. That is that was what mine. she was called? Totally hair totally Barbie. Totally hair Barbie. Yeah, she was mine. Nobody else could play with that. Well, I, I appreciate that because I think there's nothing in the world to compare with a good father. Yeah. It's a different role than the mother. And uh, that's kind of where we have a real deficit, I think. We do. And the guys, I try to convince them, you know, do what I did. I spent a lot of time with the girls doing what they wanted to do. And we, we, that's why we're close today. Mm -hmm. And they're all beautiful. And they're all incredibly smart. And they're fun to be with. You're missing out if you, 
lot of, a lot of families, the guy, the dad, if he has a son or two, he's with them, and the mom's with the girls. No, no. you're going to cross-pollinate. They're all your kids. Come on. Well, I think that's the uh, great, great deficit in this culture. I read where I think 26 of the 27 school shooters, the young men had no father. Yeah. Um, I had Bill Wilson on here not too long ago. He has this great work in Brooklyn and deals with kids never had a father. Yeah. He, he said probably 80% of them in he's those on, neighborhoods he's on the don't front have lines. a father. Yeah. Oh, boy. And he said... Probably shouldn't advertise this, but when they get a boy in the ministry, they rough him up and throw him up in the air and, you know, <laughs> treat him like yeah, a man. And they they need that. Mm -hmm. William needed to fight. He needed to be physical with me. I would have never have done that with the girls. They wouldn't have wanted to, of course. It would have been inappropriate. But William, That's oh, yeah. Uh, this is one reason that they're saying now we need to have recess in schools because boys need to go out and let off some right. steam. That's the way they're made. Sure, don't take away recess. That's ridiculous. Let them get out there. Right. So really what we're talking about is you want to uh, raise sons and daughters that can have a successful marriage. Right. And a lot, a lot of it begins in the home. Oh, There's it no does. question. If you can model a healthy marriage, you don't have to even teach them a thing. If you just show it day in and day out, they'll pick it up. If you can add some teaching, so much the better. But if they, if your marriage is bad, you're you're dooming them almost to a bad marriage of their own because they don't know what to do. And, and to the viewers out there, that you some of you are ready to give up, don't do it. Get get you some resources, like uh, doctors' books and things. Do not give up. No, God it's can turn it. every marriage around. That's why I tell couples. I see the worst kind of cases: multiple affairs, uh, you know, domestic violence, uh, verbal abuse. Uh, you know, people that have been living together in separate rooms for 20 years. God can turn it around if you do the right things. Mm -hmm. He can. I know, and I still believe in miracles. Absolutely me, believe that I, I serve a, a miracle-working God, and that can be in any area of your life. Yeah. Where, where it is needed. He can do anything, mm -hmm. anytime. Yeah. Um, where does that truth come into your counseling? The miracle, the, uh, or yeah, the spiritual? The, hey, you know, you need God in this thing or oh, it's never going to work. Yeah, right from the top. And, and I see couples who don't, maybe one doesn't even know Jesus. Well, I'm going to still do the same thing that I do. You've got to have God. I pray at the end of every session use their names, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, it's a brief prayer, but it's very important. And right away we start with the spiritual bonding. Even if one doesn't know Jesus, the other person can pray and that person can listen. That's going to be two minutes. Can you do that? But if they're both Christians, they, they start talking spiritually. It's part of their couple talk times. They have prayer time. Of course, I think going to church is vitally important. It should be every week. You need to be involved. Couples that serve together in church, at least on occasion, on a regular basis, it's, it's wonderful. You can worship together. You can read the Bible together. All those things, it doesn't take that much time, but it makes all the it's difference. It's a good place to start. Oh, man, you can't go wrong. I'll tell couples, God will honor you and bless you for just doing it. Yes. But the actual doing of it actually bonds you, and God is now working through you. I need God's help to love Sandy and vice versa. can't do it on my own. And talking to our viewers, I wonder how many... I think I maybe don't want to know, you know, the percentage of those who really pray together and read the scripture yeah, together. It's low. It's not rocket science. No, it's in the single digits among Christians. Yes. Yeah. Well, whoa, there's a lot of resistance to that. But if a couple's going to see me, they're just going to have to do it or I won't keep seeing them. It's that important. You can't, you can't put God in the shelf. And our marriage is fantastic. No, no, you can't do it without him. Once they start it and they get a little taste of it, and they realize, Satan's doing everything he can to stop them from being in church and from praying together, all that. He hates that. And his word is powerful, yeah. sharper than a two-inch sword. It is. God's actual word is awesome. So you, you, you share a verse together, somebody reads it out loud, you talk about it, that's just a gold mine. Mm -hmm. It's going to really impact your marriage. And that would be a wonderful first step for people that might never get to hear you say in a church setting or on the phone or however avenue there is, if they just started right there, that would be a right. giant step. That's not a baby step. No. I'll tell couples and they'll say, we're not ready to pray. We hate each other. I said, yeah, I know. Well, when will you be? Yeah, exactly. Start <laughs> now. If the prayer is as simple as God help us, he'll, he'll answer it. He'll you got to start it. somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And 
to be raised in a home where mother and father pray together yeah. is worth more than Boy, it is. any increase in salary. or True. You know how important it is. You're going to look for someone as a mate who's going to do that with you right from the get-go. Oh, it makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we are out of time again, but he'll be back next week, and I, I'm still not through with the book, so we will pick up with that. But I think there's so much that you can learn just from the conversations we have and then have all this other avenues available if you want to reach him, you know, through writing or telephone or podcast or whatever. Uh, there is help available. Don't give up. Don't give up on your marriage. Uh, we know and we serve a miracle working God. Uh, stay with me. I have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Martha Lean would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Oh, I made a boo-boo there. He'll be back next month, I said next week. I hope you realize, uh, you who are married, and maybe if you're having some rough waters right now, what a valuable, valuable resource this gentleman is. And I'm so thankful that the Lord sent him our way and we can have him on regularly. I've mentioned this before, but when you come up against difficult things in time, sometimes it's one paragraph you need and you read in a book, or maybe you've listened to some podcast or something, and it's given you just a new outlook. It can change everything, friends. Trust me, I'm old enough to realize that that's happened several times in my life. So the name of his book is Men Are Clams and Women Are Crowbars. Best description I've ever read in my life, but it's all on communication between husband and wife. And um, that can be a huge problem. And maybe it's just the elephant in the middle of the room. Uh, but that's what it is. And so if you realize how it works between men and women, it can make all the difference in the world. It can save a marriage. It can save a family. So I'm very thankful to have this great resource, uh, Dr. Clark, his podcast, everything else that he does, and his books. And I hope it's a blessing to you. And I hope to see you next time. And remember, until then, this, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.